Welcome to Microsoft Dynamics DX4 Finance Remote Training, Day 5. Uh, today we will cover finance case exercise. So I'm Otrone Biga from Curious Mikhail today. My experience is product six years. Specialization is uh, financial management, trade and logistics projects, human resource management. Uh, here you see my email. Things you need to know. You need, you need to do your exercise. If you need, uh, you need to study by yourself. I am waiting your questions before Friday at 12 p.m. Uh, time zone is GMT. Here you see my email. Uh, now you see the question from the um, last covered chapter, from the chapter 10, financial one. There is a, uh, the scenario, an invoice to a customer is in USD and the form also registered in USD on the customer account. The customer pays the invoice in Euro. The payment is also registered on the customer account, but in Euro. How can the invoice and the payment be settled? Here is part of answer. So actually, we have uh, two standard customer behaviors, the payment and payment. And um, in those uh, two behaviors, system searches for exchange rates in different ways. For example, if we have action, uh, customer action for payment and after that invoice, you see the table how system searches uh, the exchange rate. First step is prepayment in Euro. Second step is invoice in USD. Main uh, company current currency is USD. If we use automatic settlement or settlement function in prepayment journal or in a general journal, system uh, settles according invoice rate. It is, I mean, system searches exchange rate based on invoice rate. As additional, we have manual settlement uh, possibility directly in the customer table. Um, we can settle manually. So, open transaction editing form on the button function, and uh, there is a button date principle. And we have three ways how to settle our prepayment and invoice. Uh, it means how system searches exchange rates. If we select date of payment, system searches exchange rates uh, rate based on the invoice date. Then we have prepayment, prepayment process. If we select today's date, system searches exchange rate based on system date. If we select selected date, we have additional fields for date in which we can uh, fill necessary date for system searching exchange rates. So we can, uh, in this field, we can select payment date or invoice date or end of month. It depends um, which date is necessary for you. Uh, second behavior is payment, is uh, typical payment. First step is invoice in USD, and second step is payment in Euro. So if we have automatic settlement or settlement function in general ledger or payment journal, system settles according payment date. System searches exchange rate based on payment date. And we have additional possibility for settlement, manual settlement, directly in the customer table. So in the customer table, click button function, then uh, select the form open transaction editing, and in this form, uh, click button date principle. And here you have uh, the same three options, date of payment, today's, and selected date. So if you select date of payment, uh, and you have typical payment uh, process, System searches uh, exchange rate based on payment date. Today's date. 
systems uh, searches exchange rate based on system date, selected date. Uh, you can you have the field for selected date, and you can select date which is necessary for you for a particular payment transaction. Now you see agenda day five. Uh, today uh, we will uh, we cover the questions answers and we will cover case study exercise solution. So not uh, that not all values regarding exercises are created in database. And if it is necessary creating your object and value in your company. Uh, during um, during doing your exercise. Now exercise exercise one. Our company has problems with the posting on the dimension. We want to avoid those problems using validation. On the account six zero four one zero zero gasoline and oil expense and 604300 repairs and maintenance expense, we want the following. Validation list on department, department uh, 40, marketing, 50, sales and 60, purchase. Uh, six cause dimension 9030, human resource for both of ledger accounts. Validation list on purpose dimension for company cars. Mercedes, Chrysler, and Mazda. Now let me show my dynamics AX form. Open the general ledger module. Open the form chart of account. Now I locate my uh, ledger account 604 100 and 604 Okay. So I have ledger account. On the tab dimension, I select a um, option for validation list. And I don't I don't need any value in this field. For cost center I selected six it. So if I select this option, in the cost center field, it's necessary to fill the value. So I fill cost center value 9030. Uh, for purpose validation rule, I selected list. When I select list, under button validation list, Open the form dimension, and in this form, it's necessary to create a list, uh, which is valid uh, for a particular ledger account. So I created department list, marketing, sales, and purchase. And for purpose, I uh, created new purpose value and assign uh, those purpose value to list, to validation list. So now I have high class, Mazda, and Mercedes. I locate another ledger account, and on the tab they mention, here you see, the same validation rule. List, list option for department, Except option for cost center and list for purpose. And under button validation list, open the menu line dimension. 
And uh, here, in this form, I created the list, the valid list for department dimension and for purpose dimension. So you see that uh, there are several, uh, several validation options, optional to be field and table list, extent and default. And you can use this option for your ledger account. I close the form. I go back to my presentation file. Next, exercise, exercise true. To prevent our new accountant makes too many errors in the start of his job. We want the administrator to approve his journal for daily general ledger transaction. Set up a new journal attached to number sequence for ledger C. Now I go to my dynamic EX form. In the general ledger module, under folder setup, open the folder journal and open the form journal name. I created a journal, the theme, Unicode, description, and journal type. So as you remember, there are a lot of journal types and they define in which form I can select this particular journal name, journal template. So if I select daily, I can uh, I can select this journal uh, journal name, journal template only in the general ledger journal. So if I uh, want to create a periodic journal, it's necessary to uh, create another journal template with five periodic. And all other types are used in various system place. I assigned the uh, number sequence or ledger three. An activated approval process. So it means that I checked uh, checkbox active, and in the field approve, I selected user group admin. Remember on the path general, I can define various parameters. So in which way new voucher has to be generated, I can define in connection with balance, manual, or one voucher number only for one journal, only one voucher. I can define details level, details of summary. I can define post and client, current operation or tax, fee posting, line limits, currency, fixed rate. I can define amount included, sales tax or no option. And as additional, I can define journal control. So general control, it means uh, I can define for which company, for which posting, for all, for profit and loss or balance. Uh, from, this, from which account to which account, this journal name will be valid. From which account type to which account type. So I can define, for example, customers. Ledger account and only for customer type. Okay, so I already have my journal name. I go back to my presentation file. So I finished exercise two. Now exercise three. They often have a situation that the customer pays a little bit too much or too less. 
We don't want to settle over under Freeman amount, less than 5 USD. So that's the parameter. I go back to my dynamics here. Or I close and message the window. Open the account receivable module and the folder setup. Open the form parameters. So uh, notice that main uh, main company currency is USD. On the tab so settlement, I have a field maximum overpayment or underpayment. So I filled the amount five. And in this way, in this way, I can settle uh, various customers, various customers amount a little bit too much or too less. And uh, five it means that the system will control that settle has to be over under payments only less than 5 USD and USD is uh, the main company currency. So as you remember, account receivable parameters affect account receivable module. So this field affects customer transaction. I finish the exercise B. I go back to my presentation file. Now it's five four. Then then we pay the monthly insurance for company cars. Uh, the one dynamics to export or automatically allocate the cost to our department. So the following allocation terms on account six oh six two oh oh insurance expense. Department 40, uh, 40 marketing 20%, department system sales uh, 50%, department uh, 60 purchase 30%. Now I can go back to my dynamics ES4. In the general ledger module, open the form chart of account. I lo locate my ledger account insurance expenses 60620. Here we are. And first of all, before allocation, allocation settings on the tab general. I activated the option allocation. So now this ledger account will be included in the allocation process. After that, click button setup and select manual line allocation term. So here you see uh, the department value, marketing, sales and purchase in the field to department and allocation percentage 20, 30, 60. So system, uh, when you record um, a new record in the ledger account 606200, system automatically creates additional transactions and allocates amounts um, among uh, those department values. So as you remember, uh, I can allocate um, amounts to different ledger accounts. In the field account, I can select different accounts than this particular account. I can allocate uh, to different accounts, different departments and cost and purpose values. On the tab dimension, you see that I can allocate in the same ledger account from selected department to particular department, or, or I can allocate from particular ledger account to different ledger account. 
from um, specific departments to specific departments. So I have a lot of a lot of versions for allocation, and um, I can define various situations for allocation. I finish exercise. I go back to my presentation file. Next exercise, exercise five. Sometimes our customer requires items delivery at his alternative warehouse. 500 uh, meters down the street. On customer uh, 4002 wants an alternative address. On most of stress uh, 22 in the same city. So the task is create a flat alternative address. I go to my Dynamics AX form. I close unnecessary windows. I open the module account receivable, account receivable module, and the form customer. I locate customer 4002. So on the tab address, you see the main address. And uh, by clicking button setup, and selecting menu line alternative address, I'm able to create alternative address. So here you see address five, invoice delivery, alternative delivery, a suitable UISP payment service. So type defines in which form uh, this address, I can, uh, I can select this address. So delivery, alternative delivery, um, I can uh, select in the delivery process of packing, uh, the packing slip, invoice in the invoice updating process, and uh, other types I can select in other system planes. So alternative address. I create this alternative address with the same postal code, the same city. On the different street, I can assign contact information, sales tag group, and receipt calendar for delivery as well. So, if you have uh, in your database postal code, if you have imported postal code, uh, code you can um, assign simple on the postal code and system update the rest of information, except street name, um, except street name. But if you have no postal code in your database, it's necessary to create a new postal code. The city, the uh, county, state, and country region. So I finished exercise. I go back to my presentation file. Next exercise, exercise six. Customer form 002 also requires seeing item uh, CL100B, uh, ceiling lamp brush, called Pacadinamat Lampus, when he received his invoice and parking slip. He does not want to see our item description. So that's those customer's requirements. So I go back to my dynamics here. Form. I close all unnecessary windows. So in the account receivable module, select the form customer and locate the same customer for L2. Click button setup. 
And here is the external item description. External item description. Account code table, because now I'm going, um, uh, I created item, uh, item description only for one customer. But I can create item description for customer group as well. Category num, item number, I select item number, my company item, and external item number. So I wrote a new name for Cabina Matlampo. As additional uh, for the situation, I require the option in the parameter. So in the country table module, under folder status, under folder form, select form setup. The form form setup. And here you see that um, my checkbox includes both item names and description is black. So the system will include on the external item external item description. And external item description override. I selected override. So system will override a customer external item description and will not include uh, my company item description. And this, uh, these two parameters appear not only for this particular customer, but for all customers, for all customers in this uh, company. So I finish the exercise. I go back to my presentation file. Next exercise, exercise seven. Our government has decided that from the 1st of January on 2008, we have to pay a green tax on batteries. Now, all uh, batteries item code uh, begins on letter B. The tax is one residual B. Set up a new tax for batteries and be shown that all California customers buying batteries will pay that. The sales code creation select these values. SLA slash live CA and the posting group uh, CASC. I go back to my Dynamics EX4. So now we're going to work with sales tax parameters. I open a general ledger module under folder setup. I open the folder sales tag. And here you see sales tag parameters. So first of all, we create a ledger account for ledger posting group. And this ledger account uh, has the posting type sales tag. And after that, we can assign this ledger account to ledger posting group. After that, we create sales tax authorities and sales tax settlement periods. We assign authorities to settlement periods. Next, our step is sales tax code. So now uh, let me show sales tax code. And remember that uh, this form sales tax code uh, is the core of sales tax functionality. Uh, in case you're assigned to sales tax code settlements, uh, like opposing groups, you define calculation, you define amount or percent value. Um, you define how the system has to generate a particular sales tax code for customer or for vendor. So sales tax code is the main table in the sales tax functionality. I created sales tax code. Unicode is SLA name slash light. I assigned settlement period California quarterly. 
and letter posting group. Origin amount per unit. I'm going to calculate one USD per one unit. So on the tab general, I have a lot of parameters. So I can define what I want to print, code of sales tax rate. Print code, I can define uh, how I want to print maybe in percent or units in my uh, sales invoice document. I can define, I can define the rule that uh, the sales tax code is negative sales tax percentage. So I can calculate sales tax down, not up if I select this option. I can define payment sales tax code as conditional sales tax. On the tax calculation, this is my original marginal base. You see marginal base. There are a lot of options. Net amount per line, per unit, net amount of invoice balance. So we define how system has to generate and calculate your sales tax. Method of calculation. So here you see low amount or interval units. I select units in case I'm going to calculate my amount per one unit. So here you see tax, standard, zero, extend. Then I uh, define my extend sales tax code. I select extend. And I'm going to calculate sales tax code as zero. I select zero. And standard, it means that all calculation formula are valid uh, for this particular sales tax code. So I can round, and I can select round form. Due to asking you to calculate the four sales tax, so when I define sales tax as parking duty, I need those options. Click button values and define date interval. So I define from the 5th of January 2008 to 30, uh, 35th of December 2100. And my value is 1. So as additionally, I can define minimum limit, upper limit. For minimum amount, uh, upper amount, one value. In the same date interval, I can define for another minimum limit to other upper limit, another value. I have inquiries, include an item sales tax group, included in sales tax group, post sales tax. So uh, on the sales tax post, I define calculation lots of parameters, and I can review uh, inquiries and reports as well. Now I have sales tax code. Next my step is uh, to assign the sales tax code to sales tax group. So I have sales tax group California. And on the tab, set up, I assign sales tax code. So here you see that my, uh, my amount is zero. Uh, why this amount is zero? Because uh, my value one will be valid only from the next year. On this year, I have zero. And the same sales tax code I assigned to item sales tax group. So I created a new sales tax group, and on the tab set up KFC, I assigned sales tax code. So after that, I assigned item sales tax group to, to items in the inventory management module. Let me show. I open inventory management module and open the form item. Select all items 
which began from the letter B and on the tab reference in the sales order field group, so let's the field item sales tab group, and I assign item sales tab group slash live. So now the system uh, will generate uh, the sales tag code, then uh, we'll find uh, in the customer sales tag group California sales tag, and uh, in the item settings, then we'll find the item sales tag group slash live. I finished the exercise and go back to presentation file. Next exercise. Some of our customers want to pay invoices more than 300,000 USD over four months instead of one big payment, set up a payment schedule. I go back to my dynamic AX form. I close all unnecessary windows. In the account receivable module, open the folder setup and the folder payment. So, under this folder, so we set up all payment options, and they are global for customer and for vendor as well. So only uh, the way how we set up payment options, uh, the way how we set up payment options are the same. Only uh, payment options for customers located in the account receivable module and for vendors located in the account payable module. Now I select payment schedule. Schedule. I already have my payment schedule. I feel unique code description on the tab general in the field allocation. I feel uh, success quantity payment per month. So as you remember, we have uh, four allocation options, total, fixed amount, fixed quantity specified, payment, date, month or year. So I'm going to change after every month and I'm going to have four numbers of payments. After that, It's necessary to assign the payment schedule uh, to term of payment if we have some combination or directly to the customer. On the tab payment, there is a field payment schedule and I assign my payment schedule directly to the customer. I finish exercise, I go back to my presentation file. We have next exercise, exercise 9. As our customer 4002 uh, has difficulties with paying his invoices, we want to show that his balance not exceeds exceed 300,000 USD. We want to control invoices and parking slips. Uh, set up dynamic AX form so we get uh, an error as soon um, all the out as succeed the 300,000 USD. Now let me show this exercise in my dynamic AX form. In the account receivable module, in the form customer, 
New locate by customer 4002. On the tab general, I selected mandatory credit limit. The option mandatory credit limit. In the field credit limit, I defined the amount of credit limit. Three uh, three hundred thousand USD. Safety. Now I need additional options in the account receivable sets of parameters. So in the account receivable module, under folder setup, open the form parameters. On the tab uh, credit rating, there is, there is additional options to credit limit. So credit limit type, we have um, four options, none, it means the uh, system will not control any credit limit. Balance, it means the system will control only invoices of seating. Balance plus parking slip, system control um, invoice and parking slip. Balance plus all system control invoice packing slip and order creating. So I select balance and packing and packing slip. Check credit limit for sales orders. We have none header and header plus line. So now I select header plus line. If I select option none, sales orders will not be included in the credit limit controller process. Check credit limit in free check invoice. I select header because I'm going um, to involve in this process only header, header monitor. So if I select none, free check, uh, free check invoices will not be included in credit limit process. And I have uh, two options for message, error and warning. So now I need error. I finished my exercise. I go back to my presentation file. Here we have the next exercise. Exercise 10. We want to edit our ledger budget for ledger account 600200, repairs and maintains expense. We want to increase the budget with 10% for year 2007. For exercise solution, use value. Uh, budget model, this ledger account 600200, start date 31 of January 2006, and date 31 of December. 2006, currency USD and amount 500. Let me show this exercise in my dynamic CX4. I close all unnecessary windows. In the general ledger module, open the form ledger budget and locate ledger account. Show six O O two O O. If you do not have this letter, uh, the budget for this ledger account, create ledger budget for this ledger account. On the tab general, I define start date thirty one of January two thousand and six. This is my amount, and I define end date thirty. 1st of December 2006. And here see we have three methods, none, period, and key. If we select none, system will calculate um, budget amount for every fiscal period. If we select period, we can define start and end date. And we can define quantities, one, quantity one, and our quantities uh, may um, 
maybe days, months, or years. Now I just let it months. So if if our amount fluctuates uh, because of um, seasonal uh, process, we can create a period allocation scheme and we can uh, split our total amount, total budget amount in different uh, periods with um, different amounts. So in this way, uh, if we want to split in different periods, uh, different amounts based on different uh, percents, we select key. Now I select period. So I have legend budget. Now I'm going to cost. So click button edit. And here we have three change options, copy, update, and delete. So uh, I can copy, update, or delete. Now I'm going to copy. I selected option date. I'm going to increase on one year, change on one year. And I'm going to increase based on factor one dot ten. It means increase this ten percent. So I can add extra amount for my budget. So here you see that I can copy this particular model, this particular model, to another budget model. So it means to change model. I can change budget model in the copying process. I can change ledger account. I can change dimension. So as additionally, I can click button select and I can locate uh, more ledger accounts for copying process, for change of process, not only one. So if you agree on the parameters, click button OK. And here you see I have another ledger budget and amount which is 10% uh, 10 uh, 10 bigger than one. I finished the exercise and go back to presentation file. Next exercise, exercise 11. Now create a new budget model called HQ Heat Quarter. Create an assigned submodel, submodel, sub 1, sub 2, and sub 3. All budget models are included in the cash flow management functionality. For the account uh, 604100, create budget for 2007 year, period 1 month. So uh, you see the table in which the relevant information. For budget model sub 1, um, I have I have to assign department marketing and a car Chrysler and amount uh, 100,000 and you see um, the appropriate information form the model sub 2 and sub 3. On ledger budget form, review budget balances for HQ, uh, HQ budget. What has happened? Now let me show my dynamics EX form. So first of all, I create um, the main budget model and sub model. In the general ledger module, under folder setup, open the form budget model. I created his quarter and selected the, op the checkbox cash flow forecast. So this is uh, the first step for including in cash flow functionality. Next, I created the budget model step one, step two, and step three. 
and um, I checked the checkbox cash flow forecast as well. For the budget model hit quarter on the tab step model, I assign step model. Step one, step two, step three. I close the form. After that, let me show. Now I locate my my hit quarter and sub model. Okay. I created a line for hit quarter. I defined start date and date. On the tab setup, I include I select the checkbox cash flow forecast, so it means that I included this budget model in the cash flow functionality. So it's the second step. Tab step, click button setup and select menu line cash flow forecast. This is the last step. In the field percent, I selected 100%. That I'm going to include all budget terms of payment, posting type liquidity, and ledger account. The same ledger account. I created a budget model for step one, step two, and step three. So now let me show step one. Same ledger account. On the tab general, I selected start date, amount, and date, method period, and quantity one month. On the tab setup, I um, selected cash flow forecast and uh, by clicking button setup and cash flow forecast, you see that I included the same model in the cash flow management. Next. And for sub model sub one on the tab dimension, I defined marketing department and purpose so I did the same uh, for the next two sub models. And you see the amount. And a hit quarter amount is zero. Now uh, select the hit quarter uh, budget model and click button budget balances. So here you see that system accumulated all sub models for this particular budget model. You see uh, period start. All, all three sub models are included. I finish exercise. I go back to my presentation file. Next exercise, exercise 12. Our company has USD as the main company currency. Now we want to review the ledger account balances in the chart of accounts in currency uh, in Great Britain Pound. How do we do that? Now let me show this exercise in my Dynamics ES4. I close all unnecessary windows. So uh, now we're going to talk about uh, currency conversion, currency conversion online. So first of all, in the general ledger module, 
uh, under folder that are open to the form exchange rate. I select Great, uh, Great British Pound and on the tab Currency, uh, co currency Converter, I verify that checkbox conversion is active. So it means that now uh, I am able to convert uh, to convert my uh, data to this currency. Now let me show the report in the general uh, general letter module and the folder report and the folder transaction. Open the report letter transaction list. I select a date and click button OK. Here you see the transaction in USD, in Euro. Locate, uh, locate the box currency on the uh, application bottom line and double click. So here you see the currency which are included in the uh, online conversion process. So you see that Danish Chrome, British uh, Pound and US dollars are included. And date of rate. Now I'm going to review um, my data based on this um, exchange rate date. So I select the record, the British pound, and double click. So here you see the system converted to me USD, the main company currency, Euro, and assign the profit symbol, you see. So the uh, system updates this profit, let me show, from exchange rate form, from field prefix. And as additionally, I can assign suffix. If I want to reset, I double click the same, the same form, currency converter, and click button reset. So I see again my data in original and main company currency. I finish my exercise, I go back to my presentation file. Here we see next exercise. One of our customers, Form LL2, wants to prepare an order. Uh, set up Dynamics X for receiving the money, 10,000. US dollars and create the sales order with a total of 10,000 US dollars. Customer buys 100 units of item sale 100 BZ. Uh, the sales price is 100 US dollars per one unit with the sales invoice voucher. Settle the invoice against the payment while invoice updating the sales order. Now let me show this exercise in my Dynamics ex form. I close all unnecessary windows and um, verify in the general ledger module, in the form part of account, I verify uh, that ledger account, let me locate this ledger account, 212160, client closes. Uh, yes, this ledger account is included in uh, my chart of account. I close this form. I go to Account Receivable module. 
Under Folder Setup, I open the form person profile. So, and I verify that I have posting profile for payment. And on the tab setup, I verify that for all my customers, I have summary account client deposit. And for sales tax prepayment, I have California state sales tax payable. I close this form. I open another parameters, another form. In the parameters, on the tab ledger, ledger and sales tag, I verify that in the field posting profile, the prepayment, I have the posting profile for prepayment. So as additional, I can uh, calculate sales tax on prepayment. That's now um, I don't need this option. So you see that in the parameters, I define uh, default posting profile, and this posting profile appears in uh, journals, in orders, and I define the posting profile for prepayment process. So uh, now let me show, uh, show how this functionality works. Open the payment channel in the account receivable module under the tab, uh, under the folder channel. Open the folder payment and payment journal. So I already have posted my journal. I click button line. So um, enter a new line, select the customer, transaction text, select the amount in the credit side, bank, offset bank, and on the tab payment, select the checkbox for payment. After that, system updates posting profile from parameters. Posting profile, uh, which was uh, set, up, set as a prepayment posting profile. So user, uh, user doesn't need uh, to select manually, change manually posting profile. You don't need to, um, to activate checkbox prepayment. Next step is to create sales order and update this invoice. In the account receivable module, open the form sales order. I already have my sales order. I selected the same customer. I created the line, warehouse, quantity, and a sales price. I verify uh, this inquiry that my uh, sales amount is 10,000. After that, click button function and select open transaction editing. So I marked a payment transaction with sales order transaction. I marked the payment transaction. So in this way I can I can mark for settlement my prepayment transaction. After that, I update the sales order with invoice document. Now let me show the voucher. So directly in the sales order, I click button inquiry and select menu line invoice. So here you see my invoice. Um, on the right side, I click button voucher. And here you see my voucher. And you see the system for me, uh, because of uh, prepayment, 
So generated additional uh, transaction. So you see that uh, this is typical typical uh, transaction for sales for sales transaction, sales order consumption, sales order revenue, sales order issue and customer balance. So this is typical customer balance. Sales order issue, sales order revenue, and sales order consumption. And as additional system uh, generated customer settlement with client deposit ledger account and customer settlement again. With a uh, summary account from the default sourcing profile. So system in this name covered uh, covered the payment ledger account with um, customer summary account. And review, uh, review closed transaction directly in the customer table. Now I close this window. I select customer in the sales order and right mouse click, I select the menu line, go to the main table form. After that, I select on the right side button function and menu line close transaction editing. So here you see payment transaction and invoice transaction. And these two transac uh, transactions are closed. Payment, transaction text, you see transaction text prepayment, and invoice. And this is automatic transaction text, sales invoice, and sales order, uh, sales invoice number. I finish exercise and go back to my presentation file. Next exercise is exercise 14. In the future, we want to use bridging account to centrally posting payments until our bank has confirmed the payment. Set up Dynamics AX form assigned the method of payment for customer 4002 and run a payment procedure with a 100 US dollar payment amount. Now let me show in my Dynamics AX form this exercise. I close all unnecessary windows. First of all, in the general ledger module, in the form chart of account, I verify, let me locate, verify if I have ledger account for bridging process. Yes, I have. After that, I go to payment receivable to account um, receivable module. Under folder setup, I go to folder payment and open the form method of payment. I created a new line for method of payment, electronic payment bridging. So this is unique code. Uh, period invoice. So notice that uh, system use period option in the uh, payment proposal uh, summarizing process. If we have invoice, uh, system will not summarize any invoice in the payment proposal. If we have date, system will summarize all um, payments in the payment proposal based on uh, date. 
if we have week um, based on week, if we have total, uh, system will summarize all payments in one line in total. Now uh, leave invoice. So this option affects payment proposal summarizing process. I selected account type bank, payment account, uh, bank transaction type, and activated the uh, checkbox bridging posting. And selected bridging account for bridging uh, posting transaction. On the tab, uh, tab file format, I selected export format, import format, return format. So, um, let me talk a little bit about uh, additional parameters as payment control. So, um, if I select some options in the payment control, for example, bank transaction type is mandatory. So now I cannot select because um, there are some posted transactions. So uh, if I select some option system, it will control my payment uh, steps in payment channel. For example, if I select bank transaction type, it's mandatory. System will control if I feel bank transaction type in my payment channel. So this is for payments that control it. So as additionally, I can uh, define payment step process payment specification, payment fee. Um, then I created a method of payment. I assigned this method of payment to customer. So now I locate my customer in the form customer. Here it is. I selected customer 4002. And on the tab payment, in the field method of payment, I select electronic payment bridging. Close the form. So as you remember, uh, bridging posting has two steps. One step um, to post transactions with bridging ledger accounts in the payment journal and another step uh, to transfer bridger transactions uh, to the, uh, from the uh, bridging account to physical uh, bank account in the general ledger journal. Now let me show that step. In the account receivable module, under folder journal and the folder payment, open the payment journal. I already have my payment journal posted. So here it is. Create the journal and click button line. So I feel transaction date, customer account, transaction six, payment. the amount 100 and based on methods of payment you see system update offset account ledger and ledger account for bridging process system update uh, from methods of payment after that uh, post the journal Second step is uh, go to the general channel in the general ledger module. So in general ledger module, under folder channel, open general journal form. Create a new journal. Click button line. Now let me delete. Button function, and here you see the function select uh, select bridges transaction. Here we have our 
preacher uh, transaction, select the transaction and click button accept. Now we see that system transfers uh, from bridging ledger account. to a typical bank account, my bridging posting. So now this journal is ready for posting. I finished my exercise and go back to my presentation file. Here we have next exercise. Exercise system. Our company received the invoice INV uh, 2001 from Zento 301 Adventure World with Gazelon and Oil Expenses letter account 604100. This amount uh, 20,000 US dollars. This invoice has to be allocated as following. 8,000 US dollars for department uh, marketing and company car Chrysler. 5,000 US dollars for department sales and company car Mazda. And 7,000 US dollars for department uh, purchasing and company car Mercedes. Employees, Alfredo, in the account department, registers the incoming invoice in the invoice register and posts the, reg the registration. After that, employee Alfredo sends the physical invoice to person Alex for approval. Employee Alex, the invoice, approves the invoice with a signature and a stamp and returns the invoice to person Alfredo in the accounting department. Employee Alex registers and posts the approval in the invoice approval journal. Employee Alex allocated manually and selected ledger accounts for gasoline and oil expenses to every necessary department and car. After allocation, Alex posts the journal. So now let me show this exercise in my Dynamics AX form. I closed all unnecessary windows. And now I'm going to show um, transactions in the account payable module in the invoice invoice register and invoice approval channel. So under folder channel, under folder invoices, you see invoice register and invoice approval channel. So open invoice register channel. I already have my journal, this one. So create a new channel, click button line. Create a transaction date, account, vendor account, invoice number, transaction text, amount, amount and credit size. In the field approved by, enter, enter the Alex code. After that, post the channel. So you need only one line in this journal. Close the form. Open next journal, invoice approval journal. I already have this journal. Click button line. And click button such voucher. Now uh, this button is not active because I uh, have already posted my journal. 
So when you click this button voucher, select necessary in uh, necessary line with uh, twenty thousand US dollars. System will generate four lines. In one line, you will see twenty thousand, the amount of twenty thousand. So instead, uh, this amount create three additional lines. Three additional lines. And um, allocate manually amount uh, between different departments. So you see um, my line, uh, the pledge account 604100 and amount 8000. On the same dimension, you see a department value, marketing, and purpose code FRICO. Second line, I created this line for another department, sales, and for another car. And last line, I created this line for purchase department. And for last company car. After that, post the channel. I finish the exercise. I go back to my presentation file. We have the next exercise. The chief financial officer has some um, demands about the financial statement. He needs to control the uh, gasoline and oil expenses for department marketing, sales, and purchase. And for, ca and for cars, uh, Heisler, Mazda, and uh, Mercedes. Financial statement is needed with the following requirements. The main focus on the account and department. Secondary focus on purpose. Budget of current year. Balance on current year. Difference between budget and actual data. Create and print financial statements. Now let me show on my uh, dynamics AX form this exercise. So first of all, I need to create dimension focuses. Open general letter module. Under folder status, open folder financial statements and open the form dimension, dimension focuses. So in this form, I created two dimension focuses, ledger account department. And I verified that I already have purpose. So now let me show a let account department. I create a new line, and on the tab dimension, I drag and drop a let account and department. So in this order, uh, let account is in the first level, and department is in the second level. Uh, from the point of hierarchical structure. And I verified that I already have purpose. And on the tab dimension, you see that um, dimension purpose is uh, selected. Next step, create a new definition. Under the same um, tab, under the same folder, financial statement, open the form uh, row definition. So here I created a row definition, you see, 604100, this is my description, and I assign dimension focus. Now click the button structure designer. As you remember, uh, system shows uh, on the right side available ledger counts and dimensions based on dimension focus. 
So in this case, my uh, dimension focus has access to ledger accounts and departments. And receiver system for me shows ledger accounts and departments. So I I simply drag and drop. Let me show, for example, this ledger account, drag and drop, ledger account. Open next tab dimension and simple drag and drop. Department dimension under ledger account. Now I delete it. After that, when you created um, your row definition, click check and simulate. System for you create total total rows. I created a uh, row definition for second for second um, dimension focus, row definition purpose. So now let me show I click structure designer. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the car, purpose car. So here's the system for me update on the right side purpose dimension because my uh, dimension focus has available dimension purpose. I simply um, drag and drop, let me show, purpose dimension. After that, um, activate checkbox check and simulate and close the window. Now I have row definition. Next step, uh, to create financial statement. Under the same folder financial statement, open the form financial statement. So, um, here I have uh, created a financial statement with a unique code 604100 description. I assigned main focus, ledger account department, and secondary focus, purpose set. And on the tab success, you see that in the field row definition for main focus, system shows on the uh, those rule definitions which has same main uh, the same uh, dimension focus or that account department and um, rule definition for secondary focus in this field you see the system shows all rule definition which has the same dimension focus purpose in the lines um, in the form line create uh, the financial statement column. So I created department, name department, and column type main focus code, secondary focus name. So here you see that there are a lot of column types, main focus code and definition name, secondary focus code and uh, definition name as well. Current, it means current figure. Uh, you can review those figures uh, based on uh, main company currency or based on the four currency selected in the uh, for a particular column, financial statement column. Budget, you can review budget. Uh, and you can review budget based on company currency or based on specific currency selected for a uh, financial statement column. 100, you can, uh, can define um, balance or debit or credit amount uh, for, one, uh, for 100 uh, amount. And you can compare, you can select um, another ledger account for comparing. 
and uh, as a result you can get a structure. Calculation, uh, this is common for calculation. Uh, in this column we can calculate um, other columns. Cash flow uh, forecast information, you can review cash, uh, cash flow forecast information based on main company currency or uh, by different currencies. And secondary currency, if you use secondary currency, you can review information based on secondary currency. Now I select secondary focus name. Uh, if you select um, column type based on figures, budget, uh, current, you see, uh, budget, current, or cash flow, it's necessary um, on the task set to select the um, internal cost or from day to day. Uh, or define date intervals. So uh, you have the possibility to select date in the fintech process. But it's more comfortable uh, to select date interval or date, um, date period in the financial statement columns and to simply update this date in the fintech uh, process. On the tab transactions, let me show. If you have column type transaction on the tab transaction, you can define a layer, current operations or tax. You can define um, if it feels that the credit is uh, empty, system will show for us balances. Or we can review in this column all the debit amount or on the credit amount. So now I am going to leave empty because I'm going to review balances. I can select another company in the same database, in the same dynamic X database, and I can review in different columns figures from different companies. So as additional, I can review opening. So uh, as you remember, there are, we have opening period. Fiscal, uh, fiscal year function uh, moves um, most uh, balances to opening period. So I can review opening balances. Normal, so just normal transaction and closing. In the closing, uh, usually in the closing period we close all revenue and expenses ledger accounts. And as additional, we can uh, to move uh, closing uh, to move closing balances uh, for ledger accounts which have a tight balance except um, assets or liabilities. If we select column size budget on the tab transaction, we define budget model, and we can include sub models. If we define column type calculation, on the tab calculation, we define formula. So uh, it's necessary to select dash, and after that, three and four uh, define the column unique code, three and four. You see, now I'm going um, to sum budget and actual. Ah. I'm going to, to find the difference between budget and, and actual. So in this um, field, I can use usual mathematics symbols. So here you see. And I can create formula which I Chinese. Now I close this form. I'm going to print my financial statement. So I print financial statement in the general ledger module and the folder report and the folder transaction. Open the folder periodic and open the form financial statement. 
In the financial statement field, select new financial statement. So here you see that I can change output type. So, uh, I can change output type to X, uh, so XBIL export. I can change main focus and throw definition for main focus as well. I can page break by main focus. Now I'm going uh, to leave blank. I can change secondary focus and throw definition for secondary focus as well. On the tab column, I can change my date interval uh, or I can change uh, from and to date range. So here you see that I define budget model and I can change. And, I, and as additional, I can change inclusive model check, uh, checkbox. On the tab setup, you see that I can select keep zero and system for me will not show zero. I can print color page. I can print range. So I can um, I can do not print header line, transaction line, total line. Now let me show my report. So here you see my report. It's the main focus, secondary focus. You see budget figures. This is total budget figures. This is total actual figures. And this is different. I finished my exercise and go back to my presentation file. Exercise 17. Your company is going to use a new kind of machinery called FED. Your accounting year is the calendar year, and every month you have to prepare monthly financial statements of both of directors. Your company has a formal accounting policy for asset uh, depreciation, building office uh, furniture and equipment are depreciated, uh, depreciated at the strike line methods that in service life. Company costs are depreciated at the reducing balance methods at a percent yearly. Machinery is depreciated reducing balance 20 percent yearly. No scrap value is expected for any of our assets. All depreciation calculations have to be rounded. You do not wish to post depreciation amounts with uh, decimals. You only prepare financial statement for accounting purpose, so you have to calculate, calculate depreciation for accounting, transaction level current. We want to follow uh, what happens uh, when we have acquisition, depreciation, and disposal. And therefore, you can use the posting profile called um, post to ledger account. P-O-R-P. Uh, set up a new depreciation profile machinery. Set up a new value model for machinery. Create a new asset record track belonging to machinery group uh, machinery. Now let me show this exercise in my dynamic CX form. I close my report. So first of all, I create, I'm create. i going to create the depreciation profile. In the general ledger, under the folder setup, open the folder, etc. etc. So uh, under this folder, uh, we define all parameters most of parameters which are necessary for fixed asset model. And some of parameters we define um, in the form parameters in the general ledger module. So under this folder, open the form depreciation profile. 
verify with the depreciation depreciation profile. For straight line service life. So let me see. Straight line service life uh, is created and uh, reducing balance with 30%. I already have. And create a new depreciation profile for reducing balance with 20%. So I, I already have. On the tab, general. Uh, define depreciation year calendar and set it frequency monthly. So now the uh, system will calculate the uh, depreciation amount in reducing balance method. So as you remember, uh, you can define your specific amount using method manual. You can use manual, manual schedule, and you can define um, a different percent. And in the, so uh, you can define that the errors depreciation period uh, should have uh, less amount, next period should have a bigger amount, and the rest of period should have um, less amount as well. Next step, create value model. Let me show. Under the same folder, open the form value model. So I created value model machinery. I selected posting liar current. On the tab general, I selected option depreciation and assign depreciation profile machinery. I selected round, uh, round of depreciation one, and I'm not going to leave net book value, so I leave this field with value zero. After that, I click the button uh, 60% group and assign 60% group to this value model. I activated depreciation checkbox. Close form. Now I'm going to uh, define ledger account uh, for value machinery and for every 60% transaction file. So I need to open posting profile. I select posting profile CLRP. On the tab ledger account, here you see transaction type in the left side, acquisition, acquisition adjustment, and other transaction types. So I select acquisition. I create a new line and select value uh, model, machinery. I define ledger account for debit transact, debit size, and for credit size of that account. So I select every transaction type and define ledger account uh, for this particular value model machinery. MPC, and for every transaction type. Next step, um, create, create a fixed process. So you remember that before acquisition, I need to create a fixed process in the fixed process table. In the general ledger, open the form uh, fixed process. So create a new record and in the field success group select uh, success group machinery. So you know that based on this group system, uh, system updates update value. 
value models uh, depreciation book if I if I have such a specific asset group um, depreciation settings method so and you remember that on the tab uh, general technical information structure tax statistics supporting other we define non-financial information and on the uh, button value model we define financial information and we can review financial information as well so now select value model machinery and on the tab depreciation um, in the field depreciation run date select the first depreciation date. I selected first of January. I finished exercise and I go back to my presentation file. Here you see next exercise. Company receives the, uh, the sixty percent truck acquisition invoice, date first of January two thousand seven. Vendor uh, three oh one Adventure World invoice number INV uh, two thousand and two amount ten thousand US dollars. Post acquisition of a truck using the invoice channel. Review uh, success truck transaction. Now, let me show my Dynamics AX4 and let me show this exercise. I close unnecessary window. So, open the account payable module under folder journal. Open the folder invoices and open the invoice journal, the form invoice journal. I already have posted my journal here too. So you create a new channel and click button line. This is transaction date, account type vendor. This is vendor account, adventure box. This is invoice number, transaction text, and amount in credit five. I feel some amount in credit five, 10,000. So you remember that uh, when I create a line in journal, so what I, what I feel in uh, amount, what I feel um, in the field credit or debit, first of all, the system generates uh, this field for account size. And for offset account, the system generates uh, rest of size. So um, in this case, First of all, system will generate for vendor in the credit side and for offset account in the debit side. So I I selected offset account six uh, percent and my six assets. On the tab six assets, I selected transaction type acquisition and value model M A C. After that, I posted a journal. Now, let me show the financial information. So, I select the uh, successes, right mouse click, and select menu line, go to the main table form. After that, I click button value model. I select necessary value model in case I'm going to review transaction according value model and select button transaction. So 
So here you see transaction date, fixed asset number, transaction size, acquisition, and amount. I finished my exercise and go back to my presentation file. So here you see our last exercise, exercise 19. Uh, the chief financial officer generates the depreciation proposal for a uh, successor M0006 track, uh, for date 30, uh, 30 of June 2007. How many lines in the system generate in successor uh, journal? What amount in total uh, the system generates the depreciation for particular successor? Where can you see amount in total before posting journal? And uh, post the journal and review uh, success at M0006 track transaction with uh, value model and AC. Review success at expected depreciation amount. What amount do you see? Now let me show my dynamic AS form. I close all unnecessary windows. Now I'm going to use depreciation proposals. So I open the general uh, ledger module under folder journal. I open the form six, uh, six assets. I have already posted. My journal, track depreciation. So let me show my journal. So basically, in in the line, uh, you click button function. Uh, I'm sorry, proposal, and select depreciation proposal. So uh, you can set date to uh, setting to the set um, of uh, June of 2007. You can uh, click button select and reach a success table with value M006. And after that, uh, click button OK. And as additional, you can select the button for line summarizes. You can summarize all lines in one line. A system, will you, uh, a system for you will generate one line with total depreciation amount. So now I, I did not select it with option and system split uh, depreciation amount according um, depreciation period. So you see that I have six lines and this is my amount. System generated offset account from the posting profile. And uh, before posting you can see the total amount on the uh, header of journal. So we see that total amount is 1056. Good journal. And now let me show the success transaction. In the journal line, I select success. M0006, um, right mouse click and I select menu line, go to the main table form, 
After that, I click button value model and select necessary value model and AC. I click button transaction and I review my financial information. Uh, so here see depreciation, transaction type, and here see amount. I can review voucher as well. You can see. I can review expected depreciation amount using inquiries. So click button inquiry and select profile. And uh, here I see expected depreciation amount. System for me shows amount um, which I uh, expect after last, after last posted depreciation date. So you see that um, until this date I have posted depreciation amount 1056 and I can expect in next uh, 6 um, carat amount 176 next year I can expect 140 in case I use a reducing method with 20% Next year, I can expect 112, and it's okay. I finish exercise and go back to my presentation file. On this day, uh, we covered questions, answers, and case study exercise solutions. So I expect you to review your manuals and exercise one more time. Next time, uh, we will cover questions, answers, and uh, we review um, finance management. So things you need to know. Uh, you need to do exercise, you need to study by yourself. Uh, I waited questions before Friday, 12 p.m. Time zone is GMT. Here you see my email. Now, uh, let me say thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. See you next time. See you next week. And bye-bye. Thank you, Odron. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your attendance to this live meeting and I'd like to welcome you to tomorrow's Trade and Logistics Week 5. Uh, at the end of this day, you will receive, as usual, the live meeting details, uh, the recording details. Thank you very much and have a nice day.